Hello and welcome to this first lecture on the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Akte, I am faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at IIT Bombay. So, at this point I would like to remind everybody to please have a pen and paper ready. There will be times in this lecture where I will ask you to uh, just pause the video and write some thoughts for yourself. So, it will have be useful to have a pen and paper. So, the name of the course is computer systems network performance. So, what exactly do we mean by that? Okay. I am sure everybody has seen this dreaded loading icon when you are trying to see some uh, movie on Netflix or some uh, even a lecture let us say. Uh, sometimes you will see this loading icon and uh, or if you visit a website you will see some icon which is showing you that the website is still loading. So, uh, everybody who has done anything in computers or and used networks um, have experienced this and this is basically a delay in loading right. And when you see this uh, you might say that ok today my network performance is poor or uh, today this application is performing poorly. But what exactly do we mean uh, when we say performance? Okay. So, this is an excerpt from actually a dictionary meaning of performance. Uh, so, we all know that one meaning of performance is actually like an art performance of some kind uh, either a music performance or a dance performance or a performance of a play and uh, we might say oh that the, the performance of this actor in this play was really nice. Um, obviously, that is not what we mean in this course. Uh, in this course, the last definition on this slide uh, is the one that is uh, the one that we mean which is the manner in which or the efficiency with which something reacts or fulfills its intended purpose. One way uh, to use this uh, word in a sentence in, in normal life would be the mechanic evaluated the car's performance in city conditions. Right? So, you are talking about uh, how well something does what it does. So, digging a little deeper into this uh, meaning of the word performance. So, uh, it is basically about how a system does its function, performs meaning does its function uh, given that it is functioning. Okay. So, this is important uh, when we talk about performance uh, let us say of a car. Okay. Uh, when we talk about performance we will refer to its characteristics like uh, how many kilometers it is giving per liter or how fast it can go from 0 to some 60 or 100, uh, but we assume that the system is functioning. Sometimes in, in kind of loose language and for the purpose of this course it will be wrong language, uh, we, it can be the formal word for that is actually reliability or dependability. So, uh, for example, in the car example, if we want to talk about how uh, often the car breaks down. Uh, that would not be a performance uh, matter that would be a reliability matter. And uh, just so that the difference is very clear in our minds these two characteristics do not go together. For example, a car could be really uh, efficient or it could be very fast it goes to 0 to 60 in, uh, in, in, in a few seconds, um, but it could just fail all the time like okay, every 3 months it just breaks down you have to take it to the mechanic for repair. Uh, on the other hand a car could be very reliable like it just goes off for, on for 5, 6 months like 5, 6 years you have not had to do any uh, anything other than just regular service it has never broken down, uh, but it it is just basically let us say a petrol guzzler. Okay, maybe you just needs a lot of petrol or it uh, is basically um, just slow does not really take a lot big you know go to very high speed. So, these are uh, standalone characteristics they do not go together um, and uh, so we will be focusing on this part you know uh, how well a system is, is doing its function uh, given that it is functioning that is the focus of this course. So, let us go further okay. uh, coming back to this dreaded loading icon right. This icon is basically a um, indication of a delay right something that you are waiting for you wanted to start watching the lecture or the movie right now, but now you are delayed. Uh, the point though is that delays are not something that is specific to computer systems or network right. We face delays in, uh, in many places in life. 
So, maybe this is a point where on your uh, paper that you have with you, you can write down places where you just have been delayed, you have had to wait for something. Um, so, I will give you some examples here. Uh, these people are waiting for a train, this is some other country where people you know stand in queues like this uh, or maybe sometimes I have seen this at uh, Delhi metro also people stand in uh, queues uh, for the train um, and they are going to face a delay. This person here is going to be uh, you know have some time to go from here to here and also they are just waiting for the train to come from whichever side, the train is not here yet. Okay. Then uh, this is actually a photo of a poll booth and uh, these are all voters waiting to vote and clearly this uh, person here, this person here and all of these people actually are going to face some delay. There will be some ID checking and so on that, so they will spend some maybe hours in the line. Okay. Uh, then we have this escalator here, right? this is uh, people have come out of this train and there is a crowd here and uh, the people who were right here they got onto the escalator quickly, but uh, other people have to wait. Um, similarly, there is this uh, woman, I mean there is nobody in front of her, but she is still waiting for the elevator because the elevator is somewhere else, right. Um, then we have this road and we all know, uh, we have seen traffic jams in our life, we have spent a lot of hours in our life on the road. So, uh, clearly whoever is here is, is going to be delayed to wherever they were planning to go, right. Um, so, uh, just digging a little deeper into the delays. Uh, why do delays happen? I mean uh, something is common uh, between the 5 photos that I showed, right? The, the person waiting for the elevator, the road, the escalator, the pole booth, the train station. Is there something that is common here due to which people end up waiting? Okay? Think about it, write it down. Um, so uh, why do delays happen? One reason of course as we, we discussed during the definition of performance is, is breakdown, right? Uh, maybe this person here has gone uh, for a lunch break or uh, this escalator just was not working for some time, uh, you know there could be breakdown. But the focus of this course as I said is not about breakdowns and because breakdowns are not always the reason why delays happen. This person could be really working very, very efficiently, really trying to do the ID checks and everything and very busy not taking any breaks, but still a line can form, right. Uh, similarly, this escalator could just be functioning perfectly, still a, uh, there will be a crowd and there will be delays. So, it is not always, uh, breakdown is not the, the reason always, okay. Actually more commonly the reason is contention for shared resources. So, let me talk about each word. What is a resource here? The resource is the thing that everybody is using and we can see here. So, for example, the road is a resource here, the pole worker is the resource here, the escalator is the resource here. And uh, in the previous photos, it was the elevator. Uh, somewhere it was the train, right? These are all the common resources, and uh, they are shared. Obviously, uh, the road is not only for one car. So, if you are living in a bungalow and uh, there is a driveway that just comes to your uh, bungalow, uh, then sure, that road is not shared by anybody, and of course, there will never be any delay to get onto that road. If uh, the elevator was like you, maybe you own the building and the elevator is just for you, the elevator could always be parked wherever you just got off, so you are going to go uh, there itself and there will never be any delay. Um, but uh, normally that is not the case, resources uh, that we see that where delays are happening, those are happening because they are shared and there is contention meaning people are uh, competing for the resource, they are all vying for the same resource, they all want the same resource, they also want their desire to use the resource comes at the same time. If it also came very regularly at different times, then also there won't be any problem. But that contention, meaning it's a competition and it's a uh, it's a desire to use the same resource at the same time. That is the root cause of delays. Okay, so sharing uh, results in building of what is uh, what we in general also call queues, and in computer networks also we will see queues. Uh, sometimes, of course, they are just like crowds. Uh, uh, but uh, in some abstract sense there is a queue, there is no order but there is a queue for the shared resource and queuing is what results in delays. Okay. So uh, what do delays depend on? Okay. Let us keep 
further thinking in, in, in a general life. Okay. Um, so, here for example, what is what are all the factors that will determine how much delay this person for example will face. Um, so, there are many things one can think of, uh, but the main uh, common ones I will list. Uh, obviously, one thing that will come to our mind is the speed, right. So, how long does the poll worker take to check the ID or whatever of one person, right. If it is one minute per person, uh, the uh, delay from here to here for this person will be less. If it is 5 minutes per person, it will be more, simple as that, right. Um, so, how speed is of course a rate. So, you know, can the poll worker check the IDs per hour uh, versus uh, only 10 IDs per hour? So, that is uh, the speed. Okay. Uh, then number of resources, you can see here there is there seem to be 3 lines 1, 2 and 3 that means there are 3 desks where people are checking the IDs. Uh, if there was one more here uh, you know one more here then clearly uh, there will be less delay. Okay. So, the number of resources matters. Similarly, here you can think that if there was one more escalator on which uh, people could go up uh, there could be less delay. Then the next one is workload intensity. What do I mean by workload here? It is basically the amount of work, it is the same meaning that we have in normal life. What is the workload that is coming to this poll worker? Uh, meaning you can say how many uh, people per hour are coming to this polling station. Okay. Clearly every if everything is the same, there are 1, 2, 3 desks. Um, and the speed of the uh, poll worker to check the IDs is the same. Even we, when all of these are the same, the rate of people coming to the uh, polling station per hour will, will impact the delays. So, if there are let us say you know 200 people coming per hour versus 500 people coming per hour, so 200 arrivals per hour versus 500 arrivals per hour. Uh, the delay will be different because the lines will get longer, right. For 500 the line will be longer, for 200 the line will be shorter, uh, even if rest 3 are the same. Uh, so, one is th that is the intensity, it, this is some, th some sort of a rate of uh, work coming to the resource, uh, this it will depend on this. It also depends on the nature of the workload, ok. So, uh, just uh, you give your attention to this example here. Uh, here uh, consider two uh, conditions, okay. one where um, if ten persons arriving per minute to this escalator versus hundred persons per ten minutes. Okay. So, ten persons per minute and hundred persons per ten minutes this is actually the same rate, but but the nature of arrivals is different, right. So, if the train here is coming every 10 minutes, okay, the train here it is this it, this is a realistic example, maybe the train arrives every 10 minutes. And when the train arrives, 100 people get out of this, right, 100 people come out of this and then they queue for this escalator. If that is the case, then the crowd will form, but if you can think of, uh, of uh, 10 persons per minute uh, coming here 10 percent does not look like uh, there will be much delay they will be able to go up this escalator pretty fast versus 100 persons every 10 minutes. So, in this case the rate or the workload intensity is actually the same, but the nature is different ok. And this kind of uh, second thing is called bursty means there is a sudden burst of work. So, if there is a sudden even in this case for example, if whole morning nobody came and 11 am suddenly you know like 1000 people landed up here right like ok. Then, then the line will be very long right. So, the nature of workload uh, is important as a and not only the overall rate. Uh, lastly, uh, the resource sharing policy or what we call scheduling policy in computers and networks that can also make a big difference. What do I mean by that? Uh, consider these two examples ok. Here uh, this is a resource it is being shared. Anytime there is a resource and it needs to be shared, you should have a rule about sharing it right. The policy means some kind of a rule. So, first come first serve is one kind of a rule, it is also called a scheduling policy. So, here obviously it seems like it is first come first serve, here it is there seems to be no policy right, no rule. 
people are just going whoever can push ahead is pushing ahead. So, clearly there will be some difference in the delays here, here it will be a little more predictable, here it will be a bit unpredictable. So, uh, now also compare these two roads right. Uh, here there seems to be a very clear sort of lanes and they are all standing behind each other. So, uh, we expect that the time for the car to go from here to here will be different probably shorter than whatever is happening here where there seems to be the road is shared by uh, moving cars, by parked cars, by people there does not seem to be a clear rule on where should people be, where should parked cars be, where should moving cars be. So, uh, we expect uh, maybe more delays there. Right. So, the sharing policy is very important resource sharing policy and that will also affect delays. Now, why did I talk about all of this right this course is not about roads and escalators and elevators and all that. Uh, the reason we talked about this of course, is that the root cause of uh, delays in computing systems and networks is the same. It is the fact that there are shared resources. And because there are shared resources, there are queues. Okay, so, again uh, in your uh, notebook, think of some resources. Here is where it is useful to recall uh, the prerequisites for this course, uh, you know, the OS uh, networks, all kinds of uh, undergraduate uh, prerequisites. Um, so, think of hardware, computer hardware also. There are uh, many resources, okay. uh, as the most simple resource that comes to mind is, uh, is CPU. Okay. And when you think of, uh, of any resource, think of who uses it. Okay. Uh, a CPU is used by whom? If you remember your operating systems, the entity that is actually scheduled on the CPU, it is called either a process or a thread. right? Uh, or you can think of a network link right a network link uh, what is it that actually goes on a network link in terms of computer networks uh, I mean you can think of many things it is uh, you know electromagnetic signals and so on. But a computer uh, networking view of link uh, should suggest to you that the thing that uses links are packets. So, uh, in this way we have we can think of resources and users and these are shared a CPU is never uh, in a modern CPU uh, is never only running one process or one thread. It is running actually hundreds of processes and hundreds of threads and uh, there can be only one CPU and hundreds of threads and they have to wait their turn to run on the CPU. So, there are delays. Uh, a packet lots of packets go on the link and if many thousands of packets come to one link at the same time uh, like happens when you are downloading a file or something then there will be a queue. Okay. So, here are a little more detail of that example look at uh, the first example of a packet queue for network links. Uh, this is uh, basically a network here these are switches and uh, there are links shown. and. Um, this is here an IP camera that is con connected to this switch. Let us uh, imagine that there is uh, one more uh, switch here, okay, one more camera here. Let us say there is one more camera also sending. So, this IP camera will be sending packets here, this IP camera will be sending packets here and uh, let us imagine that all of this is going to this router here. So, uh, if, if all of these packets are going on this shared link, this is basically shared then a queue will form right on this outgoing link there will be a queue. Okay. Similarly, you can consider this computer and this laptop suppose they are both uh, uh, talking to this laptop they are both suppose this laptop is downloading uh, a file from both these uh, computers at the same time. So, again this computer will send packets here this laptop will send packets here and both these will be queued uh, will be wanting to be sent on this link. So, a queue will form here. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, there are uh, uh, when we go to a website, we send an HTTP request. If you remember, again uh, remember your application layer protocols. Uh, what goes to a website 
is HTTP requests or web requests, right? It is a web request going to a web server. A web server is nothing but a process with multiple threads running on a server machine, right? So, uh, here I have shown 4 lines uh, to represent 4 threads. So, suppose these are all busy right now working on some request. Uh, then uh, the next request that comes here will have to queue and this will basically be a buffer some in the computer memory. These requests will have to be just placed somewhere in the computer memory and this will result in delays. Uh, similarly, the CPU itself like I said in the previous slide, the CPU itself is a shared resource and in fact these threads, these threads are, are soft entities they have to run on a CPU, right. So, these threads will be the ones actually contending, right, contending for the CPU. So, this can be thread 1, thread 2, thread 3, thread 4. So, uh, if we again think about uh, the resource and the uh, queues that form in front of that, this is what leads to delays. Okay? When you click on your YouTube uh, link sometime and you see the this loading icon, uh, somewhere here in fact this shows the whole journey that the packets would be queuing somewhere in some switches, first your request will queue for the thread the threads might be queuing for the CPU, then even if the uh, machine starts sending packets, the packets might queue on so many routers all across the world until they come to your laptop or your mobile phone. So, it can lead in sometimes it is fast, sometimes uh, everything is, is nice, so there are not many queues, but sometimes there will be delays and they will be very perceptible to us. Okay. So, um, this is just uh, putting down the pictures in the previous page as, as a list uh, with some more examples. We already saw the CPU and the thread as a resource, we saw the web servers threads and the uh, HTTP requests. Um, here uh, in fact uh, there is an interesting thing here that um, in this example the threads are a customer or a user. Customer is a word we often use uh, to make a to describe these users and the things that queue for resources um, in a very general terminology if we want to use we sometimes use the term customer. Okay. But you can say the thread or the process is a user of the CPU, but it also is a resource itself okay, for which HTTP requests or web requests queue. So, um, uh, a resource can sometimes be uh, a customer of another resource or user of another resource. Okay. Uh, we saw uh, this link example uh, with IP packets as the users. Uh, similarly, we can have a wireless medium. Many of you who are watching this lecture uh, might be on a wireless medium and uh, currently your laptop uh, will be uh, downloading these uh, uh, packets. It will the packets will be coming from a Wi-Fi router to your laptop. And uh, so, the wireless medium is a resource, it is being shared by possibly your laptop and many other laptops which are on the same Wi-Fi network. If there is nobody on the Wi-Fi network then you are the then, the, then your YouTube video is the uh, only one using the network. But if many people are using the same Wi-Fi then it is a shared resource. Okay. So, the users are frames uh, at the link layer packets are called frames, right? so we call them frames here. Uh, printers are often shared and then the print job is the user. Uh, this is another interesting example where we have a, a, a web server threads again become customers for a, a log file. Many times server processes write something to a log file like what time did the request come, how long did it take, what time, what type of request it was. So, when it does that all the threads have to use a common log file. Uh, so, uh, then this log file is a resource. Because if another thread is writing to that log file, the other thread who also wants to write to that log file has to wait. So, there is actually a queue uh, of threads waiting to write to the log file. Okay. Uh, another very important example is cellular network channels. So, when we use our mobile phones and, phones and make a normal cellular call on our uh, mobile phones, they actually go on these things called channels which are owned by the cellular operator and the user entity there is the call itself, the channel has to be, gi be given to the entire call. 
and sometimes if there is a lot of traffic nowadays it does not happen much but if there are not many channels and there are too many users some emergency has happened everybody is trying to make a call you will get a network busy signal right. You will get on your phone actually a, sick, uh, a message say, which says network busy that means all the channels are busy ok. So, uh, these are all the resource and user pairs and it is useful to think in terms of these pairs. Uh, clearly there is a notion of uh, performance uh, right uh, that exists for all of these use resource user pairs right. Uh, there are the notion of performance is often seen as, as uh, delays. We often say something is slow or something is fast. That is one very common uh, way that uh, we describe and we talk about performance of, of a computer or network system. But can we formalize it a little more? Can we talk about a few performance metrics uh, like uh, the time to load a web page uh, that is a metric. Um, similarly, uh, all of these just as we discussed the delays depend on number of shared resources, uh, the speed of the resource, the workload intensity. Can we for each of these systems actually the ones that we listed here can we be more specific? The earlier discussion was in the context of uh, roads and escalator and elevator and pole workers and things like that. Can we talk in terms of computer systems and networks and identify some parameters uh, on which these are the factors on which the performance will depend on ok. So, this is what we will do in our next lecture and uh, thank you for listening.